before I even start the review, yes, yes, I had a pimple on my nose. Yes, I might get comments saying Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm already expecting it. It's noticeable as hell. I'm just going to out at myself. If you want to call me Rudolph, call me Rudolph. Let's make this video a little more related to what we're smoking today, which is Gurkha, you're the dragon, which is right here, awkwardly behind me. Together, we just have the APC and Gurkha collaboration. Today, we're going to do AJ Fernandez. Look at that gorgeous box. Just in case for people who did not see the last video, this is the box. <laughs> Ta-da! And I'm just gonna go grab this green one. If you don't goddamn work with me. There you go. Let's put the condom back onto my cigar box. Put this sleeve back on if it cooperates with me. If not, I'm about to cause heinous crimes against humanity. Do not make me on uh, America's Most Wanted. Don't make me start a cigar beef like what Drake and Kendrick Lamar is doing right now. I'll make one, Gurkha. If your boxes did not cooperate with me, I'm going to start that cigar beef. But it cooperated. So I'll say my ass shut. You have it in the cellophane. Let's take the second layer of condom on. You can never be too careful before you act silly. Make sure you wrap your willy. Did I just take? This probably happened to other people. I hope so. If not, fingers does not fit. Oh, uh, now I understand Eric when it comes to fingering girls. All right, let's fix this band. We can all look nice and stuff. All right, boom, now it's done. Look at this cigar. Look at the emerald jade color scheme by AJ Fernandez Gurkha. Just look at that band. I love the green. The red is nice. That black was cool, but there's something about this green that looks so elegant. Look at the dragon detail. It's just a beautiful cigar, especially with this Figurado. This is beautiful. This is Gurkha's Year the Dragon collaboration project with AJ Fernandez. This cigar is a Figurado, as you can see with the shape of it. It's also a box press, more literal box press. Usually box presses are more like rectangle press. It's a little bit more flatter than usual. This is actually more of a box press. It's semi-even on all four sides. The reason why I say semi is because actually the front and the back of it, it's a little bit more wider. Maybe about a couple centimeters, not even like a half an inch. Just a couple centimeters. If it was flattened on the right and the left sides a little bit more, it'd be a perfect box. Just like the last cigar, which is the one with EPC, this is also a 6 and 5 eighth by 52. We also get a little telltale of what's in this cigar. The components of this cigar is a Ecuadorian Habano. The binder is Nicaraguan. And the filler is Nicaraguan. But apparently, with other sources, when I looked at the cigar, the region of Nicaragua they use is undisclosed. And as well as the wrapper. Apparently, they sprinkled a little bit of good tobacco into the cigar, but won't disclose where exactly is in those regions. At least it gives a ballpark country of origin, which I kind of appreciate. I may forget to mention the MSRP of these cigars here and there, but just know, if it's a Gurkha Year the Dragon, it is $25 for the MSRP. All five Gurkha Year of the Dragons are $25 for the MSRP. You may either get a box like the one you saw that has all five in singles. That's $125. Or if you want to wait respectively for the releases, each cigar will have their own boxes. Very limited, most likely 2,000 or 3,000 each. And each box will contain boxes of 10. Meaning the damage of a box will run you about $250 for each special blend. If you get the five variety pack of each of the different dragons, and if you do 
like one dragon more than the other one. I believe the Oliva comes out in June, the Oscar comes out in May, and so on. I'm not too sure, but I believe if we go on half wheel, which I'll probably link in the description below, they will give you the release dates of these cigars. The last information that this cigar is supposed to be a full when it comes to strength. That is it. You get the MSRP, you get the wrapper binder filler, you have the Vitola, you have the length, everything. Tigalado, AJ Fernandez, Gurkha. That's it. No more information. I'm going to shut the fuck up and I'm going to do the review. Let's just get into it. Mm. The wrapper it smells like hay. The wrapper is a slight spicy hay with a little bit of sweetness to it. Sweet and spicy hay. It's like Dino Latina. They're sweet, but also spicy. I didn't even feel bad cutting this. So far, what I do know out of the two cigars I have reviewed, one thing I know for a fact for this two cigars I spoke so far, the only one that has been boxed up to me is the original Year of the Dragon of Gurkha, which is the one by Artista. Let's see if this could get a box out of me. Since this is a Figaro, I feel comfortable with three slices. This has a back to it. Prevents me from overcutting. Let's do a cold draw. I'm scared. The cold draw is giving me nothing. Very, very, very light. Very light sweetness. Could be possibly either espresso or chocolate. AJ Fernandez is known for spice bombs. AJ Fernandez is also known for flavorful cigars. AJ Fernandez is just known for a lot of stuff. So I'm pretty excited for the cigar, but also scared the fact that I'm not getting much. The wrapper gave me a little bit of a aroma. But the cold draw is basically blank. Yeah, this is very light, very light, a extremely light espresso with a very dash of leather in that cold draw. Very light. It's not really much. Well, it is time for me to light up. Nah, that was a little bit weak. That does it better. Ooh, that shit reverberated. All right, guys. You're focusing on the wrong thing. All right. It's toasted. Spicy. Woo! Woo! That draw, that first puff to ignite was tight. The second draw, it was like night and day. I'm going to go pull harder because I thought it was a resistance. No, it was just like a straw. Wow, that took me off guard. That was a lot of smoke output. This is a straw. Spice. Like a, it's a tea note to it. Ooh. Spicy. All right, let me not retro. The retro is kind of burning me. It took me off guard. There's a little bit of a heat spice to it. I feel it in the back of my throat. Ooh. And I told you, they're notorious for spice bombs. This is actually nice. The taste starts to linger in my mouth. I'm getting this like this herbal tea. This is like a cayenne and paprika type of spice. Because not only you have the spicy aspect that it kind of burns your, your nose when it goes to the retro, but it has like a heat spiciness after you're done exhaling out the substance. I'm getting tea, spice, a little bit of leather. Should I have this spice kind of die down so I could just dissect it more better? Mm 
There's a little sweetness to it. That hay is there again. All right. Let's look at the ash. That is white. The surrounding is white. Middle being slightly gray. The burn is very nice. Construction looks gorgeous. Box press did not crack. There's no cracks anywhere. This is a great quality cigar. Something I'm not that surprised of since it's by AJ Fernandez. All right, the spice is slowly dying down a little bit. I'm getting a little bit more acquainted to the taste notes. I'm getting a little bit of earth in there too. This is a little bit more of a rich earth. Damn. Woo. Wow. A few retros that spice in this, it cleared my nasal passage. I feel like I could breathe in 4D. I'll see you guys in the second third. So I just finished the first third of the cigar and it blossomed into espresso. Spice, very lingering in the background, but that's basically it. The espresso, a little bit more earth is coming out. Herbal, gone. There are my spices back. What is what is going on? Same as the last two dragons, the Gurkha by Artista and Gurkha by EPC. This has a nice feeling on the palate. It doesn't linger, it doesn't give you a little residue in your lips. It doesn't linger on the palate long. With the construction, with the parents. I can understand why this is $25. Taste notes is pretty solid. That herbal earth with a spice was quite nice. The spice was a little bit too overpowering as some aspects in the very beginning, but it very lightened up. So if you were a spice bomb person, you would enjoy the cigar. That hay note also kind of disappeared, but it kind of gradually kind of hits your palate a little bit, and then it just disappears again. So now spice is gone. Spice is gone. Now I'm getting this very dark espresso. That leather is slowly coming back too. This is pretty good. It's not really much like a dark roast espresso. There's a very smoothness to it. And if you are a Starbucks drinker, this would be a little bit more kind of towards the size of a blonde roast compared to the typical pike or the medium roast. Definitely not a dark roast. It's very light. And that ash, it's still that crispy white. Look at that. Look how white that ash is. Look at that. Look how white that ash. That ash is nice. There is still zero resistance to the draw, which is just immaculate. Look at that smoke output too. Damn, look at that smoke output. AJ, good job, man. With that being said, see you at the last third. I'm at the last third. How I know is now it's starting to change a little bit of flavor. I still have that coffee note. But I could see it, but I could taste it slowly dying away. I'm about to hit that third mark. The finish is woodsy. Now earth is coming back to be on top. Before you had the whole earthy aspect that was basically playing a little bit with background character. Now it's like the protagonist with that oakiness. Almost like a barrel woodsy. It's getting sweeter too. The leather also came back too. There's almost like this meatiness from that earth. A little bit more towards a lane of mushroom. You have that like almost meaty earthiness. So mushroom and wood. The spices here and there. Not that often, but occasionally the spice comes in and out. I can still kind of feel it in the back of my palate. 
that hay is also coming back. But this turned into like a hay mushroom oaky cigar. Not bad. Honestly, not bad. This is actually pretty good. I don't mind this cigar at all. Okay. That's my opinion so far. Let's get into the rating system. And for those who are new to this channel and just clicking on this because you're thinking about buying the cigar, I think it's worth $25. If you can find it for a little bit cheaper, go right ahead. I would not pay more than 30 bucks for this cigar. Wanna go for a box? I will say a box is kind of worthy of it. It's not bad to me. My rating system goes in three tiers. You have the first tier, appearance. The appearance is the band and how the cigar looked. Then I go to construction. More detail about the looks of the cigar, the draw, the ash, how it held up, they had to relight it. All that is deemed under the construction rating. Lastly, is taste notes. That rating holds more value compared to the other two ratings. How I typically do it is appearance is one times the value, construction is one times the value, and taste notes is 2.5 times the value. That's how my rating system works. And let's see what you guys think about my rating. Let's start off with appearance. You have the band, that beautiful emerald jade color, the golden dragon, the black ring that brings out the golden font, the golden colors, and that emerald grain. Then you saw in the beginning of the video of the shape of the Figurado. The shape was even. It looked it looked very nice. So with the appearance of the Figurado, with no type of cuts or anything on the cigar itself, I'm giving the appearance a solid eight and a half. Now let's get into the construction. The construction, beautiful, very beautiful. Draw, zero resistance at all. The very first puff had a little bit of resistance of the initial light up. Once that ignition started, it was a straw. No forcing a pull from the cigar. Everything was just super silky smooth. You have me at this level. You have me at this level. No canoeing. The cigar held up perfectly fine. They didn't have to relight that even once. They didn't have to touch up. They didn't have to fix nothing. The ash is a very crispy white. With the center being slightly gray. It's just beautiful. It's honestly amazing. Even with the cigar being this tiny, look at the smoke output. It's nice. With that being said, construction, I'm gonna give it a solid nine. To put this as a figurado, smart choice. Everything about the cigar was basically almost flawless. I'm gonna give the rating of the construction a solid nine. Lastly, you have the taste notes. The wrapper had a spicy hay to it, a light earthiness to it. Then the first third was a spicy herbal. Then it transitioned to this earthy espresso. Last third, lean towards a little bit more of the earthy mushroom oakiness. All that was really well constructed. It does not taste bad at all. This one, I didn't have to go like, eh, but eh, eh. I enjoyed it. It may not be my forte when it comes to flavor notes. The espresso was nice. It was really light. Nothing intense. But still, it was a great experience. And the smoke in this last third. This cigar is very toothy too. I love the fact that this cigar does not leave a bitter aftertaste. Either on your lips, on your palate. Once you're done puffing out the cigar, either through retro style or just regularly. Once it leaves your palate. It doesn't latch on, which I love. So far with these Gurkha series, nothing is really lingering on my taste buds. You have the taste of it, obviously, since I'm constantly smoking it. Some cigars are very oily. That oil kind of lingers on your lips. You can taste it when you lick your lips or when you swallow your saliva. This one doesn't leave much of an aftertaste. This feels like once you're done smoking, all you got to do is brush your teeth, there'll be a mouthwash, and then you're good to go. Other cigars, when it's a little bit more harsher, a little more intense when it comes to the oil, the oil aspect or just the flavor aspect, it kind of stays on you for a long while. While this one, I can smoke with me two back to back. I don't have to taste a cigar that's constantly on my tongue for hours on end. This is one and done. After an hour of me putting this down, if I 
me drinking a little bit of water or maybe a soda or whatever, I think the taste will basically evaporate. With all that concluding my thoughts of the taste notes, I'm going to give the rating a 7.5. The reason why I'm giving this 7.5 is because I kind of felt like the espresso could have been a little bit more dominant, but the herbal could have been a little bit more dominant as well. Some parts were very low on the taste notes, but it's a very smooth cigar. This is very light. This is something I can end my day with, which I think is perfect. It doesn't have that immense taste note that just lingers and lingers and that gives you this great roller coaster of notes. This is a little bit more straight to the point, herbal to espresso to wood earthiness. It's a solid cigar. It's definitely a comfort cigar. So that is why I'm giving it a 7.5. This cigar becomes a 7.9. Might as well just round it up bigger than eight, make it an even number. I'm fine with that. I think this is a fair cigar. I think this is a pretty good cigar. But so far, I think this cigar, it might be box worthy. I wouldn't mind having this again. It's not a bad cigar. I quite enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my review of Gurkha and AJ Fernandez, Year of the Dragon. Until next time, as always, I love your face and I'm out. Peace.